All right, now we're looking at a game in the Carol Khan defense between uh, Maxim Vashilagrav with the white pieces versus uh, Erwin Lamy with the black pieces. This took place at uh, Reykjavik in 2013. So Maxim started out with E4, C6, which is Carol Khan, D4, and D5. Maxime plays the advanced variation as opposed to playing knight c3 or knight d2 for that matter or exchanging. Now here black excuse me white waste a little time here by pushing the pawn to e5. The idea here is that position uh, is closed and that time is not as an important of a factor as it would be in the open games. Furthermore, by pushing the pawn to e5, the pawn is restricting black in his natural development. For instance, he cannot bring this knight to his natural square f6 and to bring in here he would risk busting up his pawn structure and the knight has no influence on the center and the knight on the rim is dim and to get involved in the game the knight would have to at least use two tempi to go from say knight here on h6 to f5 thus giving back the time that he might have gained by white uh, moving the pawn unprovoked to e5. The same idea applies after, for instance, uh, e6, knight f3, and knight e7. Notice how the knight is blocking this bishop, and to get here or here, black is going to have it have to use an extra tempo. So this is why, although on the surface it looks like um, the white player is wasting some time, he gets the uh, time back, actually, because he cramps black's development. Now, if white can maintain this, it's usually a long-term advantage and gives him some attacking chances in the middle game and a superior ending. So black has to uh, engage in a vigorous attack against the center and try to destroy it or simply develop his pieces around it. So in this game, La Mi played bishop f5. The other main line here is immediate c5, attacking the pawn. And you have a position similar to the French defense advanced variation. One of the major differences is that in the Carol Khan, black is able to get his bishop out because in the French defense, this pawn would already be played to e6, blocking this bishop in. However, to show you the French real quick. The French advanced variation. However, instead of having the pawn on c6 and then using another temple to go c5, in the French, this pawn goes immediately to z5 and saves time that way. As opposed to in the Carol Khan, after e4, c6, d4, d5, e5, and now the pawn has to be moved again, which of course is a slight waste of time. The positive side of this is that he has moved his c pawn instead of his e pawn, and therefore this bishop can come out. So the bishop comes out. Maxim is an uh, um, expert in his variation, by the way. h4. Now here, uh, black is faced with critical choice here. 
either. He plays h6, which is a normal line, or he plays h5. Now both moves have their pros and cons. H6 allows white the expansion on the king side and more space ultimately. <clears throat> so many players will play H5 and that's what was played in this game. However, as you should be able to see, the G5 square becomes quite vulnerable. All right, so after h5, Maxime played c4. e6, black wants to keep the position closed. If d takes c4, bishop takes c4 is good for white. He has a nice position. Easy, easy to, uh, easily uh, playable position. Easy to play. So black wants to keep things closed right now. So e6. Knight c3. Knight e7. And this is what I was telling you about. This knight's going to have to move again. This knight is not truly developed on the uh, second rank and therefore white will get back his time that he uh, quote unquote wasted when he played e5 without provocation knight g e2 knight d7 now here if D takes, because notice the knight is blocking this bishop, right? If D takes C4, then this knight will come to G3, attacking this bishop. And if B5, the idea of holding on the pawn, bishop G5, and queen B6 will be played. And white has compensation for the pawn. He has a nice active. Uh, position here and he will be playing a4 so after knight g e2 knight d7 black is just uh, keeping the position closed and organizing his pieces Knight g3. Bishop drops back to g6. Also opening up the square for this knight to come out. C takes. C takes. Now also possible is knight takes, which looks pretty natural. Why not exchange a pair of knights in the cramped position? And queen b3. Attacking this pawn. But here black is black is okay. Black probably can ignore the b7 pawn as he can now attack this h pawn with tempo. For instance, queen takes b7, bishop takes h4. And bishop b5. Surprise! And next thing you know, white is winning just like that. Because the threat is just simply to take the bishop with, uh, take the knight with check. And then, after queen takes, then this rook is hanging. So be careful. So, this is the reason why black did not opt for knight d5. So, c takes d5. Instead, 
bishop g5. Again, just trying to make it difficult for black to develop. Queen b6. Attacking the uh, b pawn. Bishop b5 blocks the action of the queen and puts uh, this knight in the pin and, de and de uh, threatens to take away black's castling rights. So he decides to block that threat by pl placing his knight on c6. Castle. Rook c8. Now we see black slowly untangling his position. Rook c1. a6. Asking white what is he going to do with the bishop now. He takes. Getting the pressure relief for the d4 pawn by removing that knight. Now knight c e2. Sacrificing the pawn. So after queen takes b2, rook takes c6, b takes c6, and knight f4. Challenging this bishop. I like this move right here from black, queen c2, because he's ready, he's saying, hey, I'll go into an endgame right now, and uh, be a pawn up. Queen f3, Maxim Lagrave avoids that, and uh, he could take here. Uh, it's a dangerous position for black. I think he, uh, he'd be in trouble. Just his king side would just be too weak. If the queen takes a2, knight takes g6, f takes g6. Even though he's up to material, excuse me, even though he's up material, white definitely looks like he's doing better here. For instance, this simple move, a queen d3, a king f7 is forced. And for instance, a move like knight e2 with the idea of jumping to f4 looks pretty, looks pretty tough to meet. So, for example, I don't know, bishop b4, knight f4 attacking that, and then the only defensive move is that, locking this rook in. So, basically, black is playing with the piece down. Rook c1, to the semi-open file, attacking, and... uh I just don't think that black can hold the position together. This piece is horrible, out of the game. This piece is out of the game. So basically, white is playing with four pieces versus two. And I think that uh, he's much better there. So this is why... Um, uh, La Ami did not play Queen takes C2. It just would have been uh, disastrous. So, instead, he played a natural looking move and played Bishop to E4. It's attacking and trying to initiate some trades. Another option was f6, right? Chop, chomping at the center, attacking this bishop. And it looks like he may even have him trapped. So after f6, e takes f6, g takes f6. Queen e3, very powerful move. 
again just exploiting the position of the king and the lack of development on black's part and just for illustrative purposes if f takes g5 you see it just simple queen takes e6 check and after king d8 of course the knight comes in just brutally um, taking everything so f6 is not a remedy it opens up the position further which benefits the uh, better developed player so bishop e4 so the black player decides to try to initiate exchanges so if the knight takes e4 queen takes e4 again black wouldn't mind queen takes e4 but McGraw plays queen h3 strong move eyeing the e6 square and note too that in a lot of games where the black pawns or uh, the black pawns are on white squares for instance f7 e6 and d5 as you see in this position and the center is locked up the knight is very effective on f4 and that's why you will see a lot of maneuvers such as knight e2 and then the knight and then knight f4 or knight to g3 because many times when the pawn structure is like it is in the center this knight on f3 sometimes uh, basically becomes an ineffective piece it's much more effective on f4 as it's able to threaten to sacrifice a piece in a lot of lines sometimes it sacks itself on e6 excuse me g6 okay so back to the action here after 19 queen takes e4 queen h3 avoiding the trade queen f5 so la army is uh, determined but now maxime lagrave is willing to trade here because he ruins his pawn structure and he develops his rook the full queen temple against the pawn on c6 how is he to defend himself so he tries f6 knight g6 the knight jumps right into that hole attacking the rook also possible is simply rook takes c6 f takes g5 rook c8 check king f7 e6 and this just shows how bad black's position is when uh, white can just leave pieces hanging like that knight b6 and then simply just rook c6 but instead uh, Maxime took uh, you know a logical path to victory played a natural move there knight g6 and after rook g8 he simply pushed the e6 pawn pushed the e pawn to e6 and after f takes g5 he didn't take the knight he played rook takes e6 first and you might say hey why did he do that because he knows that this knight does not have anywhere to go for instance if knight b8 then simply rook c8 is mate as these squares are all covered the knight on g6 covers e7 and then the pawn takes care of the rest of these squares bishop blocks the king on f8 and then this rook takes care of the rest
So same thing if the knight goes to f6, rook c8. If the knight goes to b6, it guards c8, but then who's guarding the knight? And then just simple rook takes b6 with the winning game. So this is why at this point, Grandmaster or me resigned. So I hope you enjoyed that game. And please press the like button and subscribe. Alright, I'll see you on the next video.